According to the Guinness Book of World Records, Deinococcus radiodurans, nicknamed Conan the Bacterium, is the toughest life form on Earth. It can survive in the most toxic environments, flooded with acid, radiation, or extreme cold. It even survived for three years on the outside of the International Space Station. And yet, when placed in the comment section under a YouTube video about climate change, Conan the Bacterium threw in the towel almost immediately. It was just too toxic. Discussions of climate change often get heated. No pun intended, because it's such an important issue. Scientists tell us that the future of society as we know it is at stake. And so naturally, there are passionate voices in the debate. On the one side, you have scientists who have sometimes spent decades of their lives researching the Earth's climate, and people who listen to those scientists and interpret their work, not always accurately, calling for change. On the other side, you have, well, it's been changing. Conan the bacterium is no longer swimming in a toxic sea of climate denial, but a toxic sea of climate doomism. Let's talk about that. This video is sponsored by Brilliant. Climate skeptics, climate deniers, various other names. You probably have a mental image right now. 2014 has been the warmest year on record. I asked the chair, you know what this is? It's a snowball. There are people who have sought to dispute, discredit, or straight up ignore established facts about the Earth's changing climate, such as that the Earth has a climate, that climate is changing, that climate is changing due to human influence. I see comments disputing each one of these points, even the first one, all the time on my YouTube channel. You may not see them though, because I have quite extensive filters on my comments and an even more extensive list of shadow banned users who have previously spread misinformation. But I can promise you, these people exist and they are loud. A recent survey found that 15% of Americans do not believe that anthropogenic climate change existed. And you may say, is that really a problem? Some people still think the moon landing was faked or that chicken run isn't the greatest film ever made. But unfortunately, yes, because the only way that we get out of this mess, we stop warming more than two degrees Celsius this century, is through ambitious government policy at national, subnational, and city scales. And that only happens if the political apparatus can create those policies, meaning you have people to vote for those policies, and you don't have people in positions of power consciously blocking such policies. Lou, can you a picture of John Cena in here? Cheers. For the longest time, those opposed to action simply denied the reality of climate change. The climate wasn't changing, and if it was, it wasn't changing because of us. We're just too small to make a difference. But as the years have gone on and temperature records have continued to tumble and extreme weather has become more extreme, the evidence for climate change has kind of become incontrovertible. And at the same time, there has come to be more of a general acceptance that we're to blame. And there's been a corresponding decrease in the frequency of comments like these on my YouTube channel. But not just mine, successful channels too. I polled 12 popular YouTube channels that make videos about the climate crisis and asked them how frequently they saw comments that agree with this statement. Almost everyone said that such comments were frequent, but there was a slight trend towards these comments becoming less frequent over the past two years. That's good, right? Well, while there has been a decrease in the frequency of these comments featuring outright denial, the tone of the conversation has now shifted. Instead of people arguing that we shouldn't do anything because there is no problem, they started arguing that we shouldn't do anything because we're doomed. I asked those same YouTube channels how frequently they saw comments that agreed with this statement, that our response to the climate crisis could never be enough and thus that we were doomed. Two thirds of channels surveyed said that such comments were frequent, so slightly less frequent than in response to the first question, but there was a definite increase in the frequency of such comments over the past two years. Qualitatively, these channels told me that they saw far more quote unquote doomers in their comment sections now. So more arguments that our solutions to the climate crisis were expensive, harmful, and ultimately pointless. A bit like Madame Webb. You may well have seen such an uptick in doomism about climate online yourself, and you could be forgiven for thinking that such a movement must come from the scientists, from people who are looking at the data and seeing how quickly the planet is changing and how little we are doing to stop it. And that may be some commenters, but in fact the people who have been really pushing and are responsible for the doomism movement 
are those same people who previously said that the climate wasn't changing at all. Earlier this year, the Center for Countering Digital Hate published this report on the changing nature of climate denial on YouTube. They used an AI model to examine the transcripts of over 12,000 YouTube videos from 96 channels known to post climate skeptic content. They used the term old denial to refer to claims that global warming wasn't happening or that it wasn't due to humans, and new denial to refer to claims that the impact of climate change will be beneficial, that our climate solutions won't work, or that climate science as a whole is unreliable. This new denial made up 35% of the claims made by these channels in 2018 and 70% of the claims in 2023. In particular, there were sharp upticks in claims that clean energy, meaning renewables, doesn't work, and that climate policies are actively harmful. To say it again, this report found that those YouTube channels that previously made old denial claims, such as that the world wasn't warming, now make new denial claims, such as that the world is now doomed to experience such warming because our solutions don't work. They have shifted their messaging. Although that's not always the case, they do highlight Jordan Peterson as an example of a YouTube channel that suddenly started making lots of new denial content in 2021 for some reason. And just as an aside, this has nothing to do with the rest of the video, the report also points out that YouTube makes up to $13.4 million a year on adverts placed next to videos like these that, you know, promote unscientific misinformation. Maybe YouTube should do something about that and its advertising policy? Because these claims are just that. Misinformation. They're readily disprovable. The negative impacts of climate being the subject of an extensive literature summarized in Working Group 2 of the IPCC. The practicality of solutions such as renewable electricity generation in terms of space, cost and scalability have been demonstrated. And thanks to the most comprehensive peer review process anywhere in science, the IPCC have been consistently shown to, if anything, underestimate climate risks. The CCDH actually pulled together a nice graphic summarizing the rebuttals to common skeptic talking points. But of course it was never about the facts for the YouTube channels featured in this report. They make videos for two non-exclusive reasons that they may not even be conscious of. Because there's a profit to be made, and because of ideology. A book everyone should read is Merchants of Doubt by Oreskes and Conway. It details how the exact same tactics were used to stymie meaningful action on the dangers of smoking, acid rain, the hole in the ozone layer, and climate change, often by the exact same people. A common factor through all the environmental and health crises detailed in this book was a mistrust or even fear of government regulation. Because apparently, it's communist. And so the tactics described in the book are firstly, deny the problem exists, and then when that doesn't work, cast enough doubt on the proposed solutions to the problem that no new legislation ends up getting passed. And so communism doesn't win. And we're seeing the exact same playbook here. We're just in the second stage now. Influences from Jordan Peterson to the Heartland Institute have created an environment, a discourse, in which doubt has been sown about our solutions to the climate crisis. And we see the results of that everywhere, from YouTube comment sections to national newspapers to political parties. And it's all ultimately motivated by a fear of government legislation and blind faith in the free market. You could argue, and I would, that the emergence of such a right-wing misinformation campaign that seeks to maintain the status quo, specifically in energy, is an inevitability of a media landscape primarily financed through advertising, such as YouTube. If that's interesting to you, go and read Manufacturing Consent. I'm not going to talk about this more in this video. What I want to talk about instead is the disastrous impact this misinformation campaign is having. Because it's achieving what it's set out to do. Conan the Bacterium is now facing a new, more toxic environment in online discourse. Firstly, the nature of the climate crisis is such that we need government policy in order to get out of it. And as I previously said, that only happens if you have enough people voting for such policy and you don't have people in positions of power consciously blocking that policy. Well, uh, the latter is definitely still happening. Luke, could you put a picture of Joe Manchin here, please? Cheers. And the former has now entered a new, more challenging phase. 
Because previously, if somebody didn't believe that the planet was warming and then experienced new temperature records being set, personal experience can, though not always, win out and they might change their mind and start supporting climate policy. If, however, somebody believes that the country is going to be ruined by these new solar farms that take up more space and kill more wildlife and are more unreliable than fossil fuel infrastructure, then they can't be easily disabused of that notion through personal experience, only through experts patiently explaining that that's not the case. And unfortunately, we know that that's not very effective. In other words, refuting the new denial position is inherently more difficult than the old denial position, because it's more intangible. It relies on the careful analysis of large-scale effects that you cannot personally experience. And so, you're quite likely to believe the first authoritative voice that you hear on the subject. And right now, that is leading a lot of people to despair. The New Denial movement is undoubtedly moving people to climate despair. A generation of people is now growing up hearing that the planet is warming and ecosystems are dying, and that there's nothing we can do about it. Research from King's College London found that 33% of Gen Z and 32% millennials in the UK say there's no point changing their behaviour to limit their impact on the climate, because it won't make a difference anyway, compared with 22% of Gen X and just 19% of baby boomers surveyed. Now, there are many reasons why somebody might become fatalistic looking at the climate crisis. I don't mean for this video to reduce a load of complex social factors down to you were duped by misinformation. But I would like to draw a very clear distinction between climate pessimism and climate doomism. Many scientists and activists are pessimistic about our response to the climate crisis or the speed of coming changes. And I think that's a very valuable thing. I found this paper on the value of considering the worst case scenarios of climate change really interesting. And it's open access, so you can read it yourselves. So there'll be a link down there along with all the other references. But that pessimism is not the same as doomism. Pessimists will tell you that what's coming is probably going to be really bad, and we should do everything we can to try and avoid it. Doomists are an extreme. They're actually what the new denial movement wanted to create. There are now large communities online of people who claim that nothing we can do to the climate crisis will make a difference, that humans will go extinct, that use words like hopium to describe, quote, non-believers. No new legislation, there's no point. No attempt to disrupt the status quo, there's no point. Apathy, exactly what the climate skeptic movement ultimately wanted to create. And it's comments like theirs that have been slowly and surely poisoning the comment section underneath YouTube videos and Reddit posts about climate change, actively corroding our response to the climate crisis, reducing ambition in policy and dissuading other people from supporting plans that would make a difference, all at the most crucial time for climate action. This video is not aimed at doomists. I can't deprogram people like you in a cult. Instead, this video is aimed at people who have seen doom-laden comments under YouTube videos, or have heard that there's no point even trying to address the climate crisis. Nothing we do matters. I can tell you categorically, that is wrong. Our solutions, even if not complete, will make a difference. And if someone tries to tell you that there's no point in even trying to tackle the climate crisis, then they either lack fundamental understanding of the climate system, or they look at the difficulty of the task ahead and just think that's too much for them. There's a chance that it might not work. In other words, they're a coward. There are many reasons why we should be worried about the future. While things are certainly going to get worse before they get better, there is a very real possibility that the 21st century will see global and regional climate tipping points being reached. Our relationships with the atmosphere, with the oceans, and with the biosphere are currently unsustainable. Maybe that will result in global societal collapse. Maybe the hot models are right and we'll see three or four or five degrees of warming this century. Maybe our response to the climate crisis will be the final pathetic chapter in global civilization as we know it. But we have no evidence to indicate any of those things are a certainty. To cherry pick the worst case scenarios from all possible projections and to deflect all personal responsibility from finding a solution that's exactly the playbook of the climate deniers of old. There is no reason to give up hope. 
We have solutions that we know work and have already made a difference. I made a whole video recently about how we are heading in the right direction. Too slowly at the moment. But that is just a pathetic justification for giving up entirely. As long as there is still a spectrum of outcomes to the 21st century, as there still is, we still have agency. We can still choose where on this graph we end up and what that world looks like. A pessimist may say we'll probably end up towards the top end, but they'll also say that it's worth fighting to make that not so. What we do now matters. How we source our energy and our food, how we transport ourselves, how we build our cities, how we relate to our environment matters. Who we elect to lead us and form our laws matters. Because we can consciously build and expand climate solutions that work and will make the future better. Don't let climate skeptics tell you otherwise. And I, for one, will not stop trying to shape my personal and our societal impact on the environment to make the future better. Because it's too important to do literally anything else. Perhaps the most important skill to have online when researching the climate crisis is scientific literacy, being able to place a claim in context and, crucially, decode what a statistic is actually saying. I've been lucky enough to spend eight years of my life at university, studying physics, the atmosphere and the surrounding mathematics. But you don't need to go to quite that extreme in order to develop a personal scientific and statistical toolkit. In fact, you can learn at your own pace in a free and easy way with Brilliant, who have kindly sponsored this video. Take a quick quiz when you sign up for Brilliant and you'll be matched with content from their thousands of interactive lessons that fits your skill level and interests across subjects in maths, data science and science. To give you an example, a frequent talking point by climate skeptics alluded to in this video is electric vehicles. Brilliant has a detailed case study on the value drivers get from buying an EV, introducing you to concepts like regression and correlation. And if that's interesting, you're in luck because they've got lots of courses on statistics. In just a few minutes each day, using their app, or their website, you can pick up new skills that will make you a more valuable problem solver to your team or a better student. By signing up for Brilliant, which you can do so for free, then not only do you support your own development, but you also directly support this channel. If you like the videos I make and you'd like me to make more, check them out because, you know, they're an amazing educational resource. To get a 30-day completely free trial of everything Brilliant has to offer, head to brilliant.org slash Simon Clark. And the first 200 of you to do so will also get a 20% discount on an annual subscription. That's brilliant.org slash Simon Clark. With thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this video and for continuing to be, well, brilliant. Thank you so much for watching. This was a video I've been wanting to make for a long time. It's something I'm quite passionate about because I have seen the uptick in this new denial movement in my own comment section. And I hope that you've taken something away from this and that you now are a bit better equipped the next time you hear this argument. A huge thank you must go to the more than 1,000 people that support me on patreon.com forward slash Simon Oxfizz. That'll be linked down there in the description. These are my executive producer patrons and also my uh, Henry Cavills and Steven Spielbergs who support me at higher levels. Everyone on my Patreon gets access to videos early. They get exclusive behind the scenes content. There's a behind the scenes vlog that we make every month and vote on a video topic every month. If that sounds good, if you'd like to support my videos and help me make more, as I say, link down there. Thank you very much. If you did enjoy the video, please do pop it a like. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you really liked it, please do share it with other people who you think may enjoy it too. If you'd like to recommend viewing next, here's to I prepared earlier. That just leaves me to say thank you again so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.